Nigel Kennedy was seven when he entered the Yehudi Menuhin School to study piano. Shortly after, he switched to violin, and among young musicians, he's done for fiddles what Monroe did for air vents. His concerts are sellouts, his technique enough to make any musician glad to be a Kennedy. I find uh, watching the telly is just one way of letting the time go by, because, I mean, let's face it, I mean, both activities are too boring to do on their own. I mean, Television is plain boring and like practice is plain boring, but if you're doing both at the same time, you almost get a worthwhile pursuit out of it. Obviously, Nigel's a much cooler cat than your old-fashioned long hair, and he certainly seems to prefer the life and times of the archetypal blues man. On tour, relaxation often means rap, funk or blues laced with Tom Sharp. Hey, man. <laughs> I find on the tour, you know, like I find it easy to listen to something else apart from what I'm playing. You know, that's like kind of therapy if I have to listen to anything at all. And I like to sit around and read and listen to a bit of music. But like, you know, since I'm doing only classical music on this tour, I find that something like Larry Colton is a bit of a break away, you know? You know, the fact of perhaps mixing the types of music, does it affect your classical playing? It does in a way, I think in a very positive way way because it makes you listen to things and the people you're playing with in a much more attentive way. So I think in a way it has a very positive effect, apart from the fact that it enables me to have a broader spectrum of imagination for the sound I want to make on the violin in whatever music I'm playing. These days Nigel Kennedy gravitates to the new rock and pop aristocracy. Swapping the Strat for a cheapo electric violin, it's definitely roll over Beethoven, tell Tchaikovsky the news. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. Can you play that with constantly. classical pieces? No, I've never tried. I mean, there are some contemporary composers who are using um, electric instruments in their work. Um, the classical composers like Bach and Beethoven, I don't see any advantage in, you know, like um, taking an electric violin and playing it on that because they thought so much about the arrangement of their music. You know, it's a bit like taking the Beatles songs. I've not really heard one Beatles cover which was better than the original. Do you see the, the, the electric violin, in fact, as another instrument? Is, is that what it is? Well, yeah. I mean, it's like I see the fiddle, you know, as a different instrument in a way. I think everyone who plays the violin has their own identity on it. And my view of the violin is like as a great source of exploration for different colours and tones, you know, whether it's electric or acoustic. I mean, so I'm trying to get away from this kind of virtuoso Paganini, can't I do everything, aren't I brilliant type of attitude and actually try and find some communicative ways of playing the violin with, with sound. And so I think the electric violin is just an extension of that idea, really. Really? 